Hello, PS54 Elementary School graduates. I am so honored to join you all in this special video to both celebrate and commemorate this momentous occasion with you. I came to your school as a ballroom basics dance instructor with the intention of moving you and wound up being moved by you. In just a few months, I watched you put aside any differences you might have had to work as a team and to respectfully take each other by the hand and learn to partner dance. Your curiosity, your hard work, your fun-loving spirits, and your willingness to learn and grow inspired me every day I had the privilege to spend with you. I feel deeply touched that you would trust me to share a meaningful perspective with you as you embark upon what will be many changes in your lives. You are stepping out of childhood and into the very beginning of your journey into young adulthood. You will have new teachers and you will make new friends. You will learn new lessons which will challenge you to think even more independently. Your bodies will change and you will experience new feelings. All of these shifts can be both exciting and scary and transitioning from one phase of life to the next is not only something young people like you are going through. We are living through a time of great uncertainty and change for the entire world. It's like taking off in a rocket ship, even though we can't see the planet to which we are heading. No matter how well we plan, there are many things we cannot predict that could set us off course. Sometimes it's a bit frightening to realize we cannot control what is happening around us. But it's exciting that we have the power to be the captains of our own ships and courses of action, which allows each of you the ability to affect what is around us. How is a choice that only you can make. In Ballroom Basics, I did my best to give you tools to act with respect toward yourselves and toward unfamiliar life forms, like students from another school who were indeed alien to many of you. As you experienced, it's not always easy. Like dance steps, you don't just wake up one morning with abilities. First, you accept that you do not know. Then, you take the time to go through the challenging process of learning then you focus your energy on practicing what you learned, which will likely lead you to realize that there is more you don't know. Michelangelo, a Renaissance painter from Italy whose masterful works we still see in museums, had my favorite attitude toward this process. After painting the Sistine Chapel in Rome, which was said to be one of the most beautiful pieces of art in all of history, he was asked what his greatest accomplishment was. His response? that I am still learning. So when I leave a Ballroom Basics class, or any lesson for that matter, I don't stop thinking about what I teach or what I learn. I persevere. I keep learning and practicing and learning and practicing, especially when it comes to that very important R word, a word that Aretha Franklin spelled out in song. R-E-S-P-E-C-T, find out what it means to me. What does it mean to me? What does it mean to you? I once said to you in class that listening requires not only your ears, but also your eyes, your mind, and your heart. That hearing is just a process through which your body registers sound. And though not every human has the use of all their faculties, and for some communication requires detours from what is common, for all people, listening involves attention, and consideration, which if you look in the dictionary is one of the definitions of respect. You know, I was your age when I got my first cell phone. It was the first year pocket-sized portable phones were made. It was a 2G and the only thing I could download was a ringtone. The idea of video chatting was science fiction and if you wanted to hang out with a friend, you had to meet up with them. After summer camp, if you wanted to stay friends with someone who lived far away, you would write letters that would take weeks to arrive. The idea of being friends with someone who lived on a completely different continent? Shh, that seemed totally impossible to me. YouTube didn't even exist until I was in college. You fifth grade graduates live in a completely different communications reality than I did. And I know how much harder it is to listen when there's an overwhelming amount of conflicting information at your fingertips. It's wonderful to have access to so much and to have the ability to communicate with the whole wide world all at once. But how do you separate fact from fiction? 
How do you know what attitude to take on? How do you take a moment to unplug and hear your inner voice to answer those very important questions? To illustrate how I do it, I would like you to participate in an exercise with me. I want you to close your eyes. Really, no peeking. I'll let you know when to open them. And make sure they're closed. I'm going to give you four different phrases to say out loud. I want you to take a few moments with each one and listen to where in your body you experience their effect. I will join and share with you what I experience in my body. Phrase one, I think. I think. Where do you experience thinking? I experience thinking in my head. Do you? Phrase two, I sense. I sense. Where do you experience sensing? Maybe in your fingers or your toes. I experience sensing along the surface of my body, concentrated in my face, but hovering around all of my skin. Phrase three, I feel. I feel. Where do you experience feeling? I experience feeling mostly in my chest and behind my eyes, sometimes in my gut. Where do you feel? Phrase four, I am. I am. Where do you experience being? I experience being deep in my center, radiating out to every part of me and into the world around me. You can open your eyes now. Perhaps you've done this before, or perhaps this is your first time purposely noticing your body's reaction to ideas without immediately deciding what it means. Practicing this kind of non-judgmental listening can help you get to know yourself better, not only now, but in middle school and in high school and in college and beyond. Respecting yourself means learning the difference between what you want and what you need in order to make choices that keep your whole being healthy enough to enjoy the life you design for as long as you can. Now having your desires met will definitely make you feel good in the moment. But as you live a little longer, you will start to realize that having your needs met will bring you many more good feelings that will last much longer and make you stronger. My friend had a funny way of explaining this. He called it the Twinkie Carrot Dilemma. Twinkies might be delicious, and when you eat them, they can give you a moment of sweet, sweet happiness. But all that sugar and those chemicals can make you really tired. And so later, when you really want to be out playing with your friends, you might end up napping instead. The carrot might not be as enticing as the Twinkie, but it has the kind of nutrition in it that gives you energy. And so when your friends come around, you are ready to play. Knowing your needs is the first step to meeting them. I'm sure you are all familiar with some of your basic physical needs like water, air, nutrition, and sleep. But we humans are so much more than our physical parts. What about kindness, communication, acceptance, appreciation, inclusion, love, safety, support, understanding, trust, humor, expression, exercise, touch, peace, equality, inspiration, choice, space, challenge, creativity, purpose, and empathy. Yeah, especially empathy. Every human being, no matter how different from you they might seem, needs varying amounts of each of these things, and maybe even things I haven't mentioned here. Respecting others starts with recognizing this. And just like learning about yourself requires listening to your inner world without judgment, so does learning about others and their inner worlds. Humans are awesome, but sometimes confusing creatures. We are not just capable of recognizing similarities and differences, but we are capable of exploring why they matter and how we can use what we understand to make peace or cause pain. So practice listening. 
That means practicing attention and consideration. Do it so you can treat yourself with respect. Show others what it means to you and so that you can treat others with respect by learning what it means to them. In doing this, you will all grow to be well-mannered young adults practicing, as we like to say in ballroom basics, making manners matter every move we make. I want to leave you with a beautiful Native American folk tale to think about as you all head into a future filled with limitless choices. An old Cherokee Indian is teaching his grandson about life. A fight is going on inside me, he said to the boy. It is a terrible fight, and it is between two wolves. One is evil. He is anger, envy, sorrow, regret, greed, arrogance, self-pity, guilt, resentment, inferiority, lies, false pride, superiority, and ego. He continued, the other is good. He is joy, peace, love, hope, serenity, humility, kindness, benevolence, empathy, generosity, truth, compassion, and faith. The same fight is going on inside of you and inside of every other person too. The grandson thought about it for a minute and then asked his grandfather, which wolf will win? And the old Cherokee simply replied, the one you feed. So, which appetite and attitude will you feed in order to recognize and respect the differences in all the new people you'll meet next year and in years to come? Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Congratulations on your graduations. May light and love be with you always.